Good morning, everybody. My name is Dave, and I'm with Salute a Great Farm. And today, I want to share with you about hydroponic reservoirs. And I want to go a little bit more in depth than I did in previous videos where I just kind of showed, hey, this is a reservoir, uh, it's filled with water. You know, today I want to kind of share with you a lot more about what a reservoir is and how you can construct it for very, very inexpensive. I spent, actually didn't spend anything on mine. Uh, I was given all the materials, but you may have what you need laying around your house. You may have uh, something in your attic that you could use. And so I'll go over all of that later. Um, and, you know, ultimately uh, it doesn't take much. All it does ha have to do is, is hold water and not leak <laughs> so um, anyway so the the main the main objective of a reservoir is to hold the solution and in a lot of homemade systems even some of the systems that you can buy off the shelf from crop king they have the pump sitting inside the reservoir and I'll show you that in a second okay now we're gonna go underneath the system here and I'll show you where that is okay so there's the reservoir and this is obviously a homemade one pump sits inside of it it's a submersible pump the cord comes out and gets plugged in this one actually has two pumps in it because I started out with um, with just half of my system and I only had a small pump and ultimately I knew I was going to put in a bigger pump but that's that's beside the point the point is is that the pump sits in the reservoir okay also the drains from your system so the solution after it gets pumped out will ultimately return and drain back to your system so your reservoir needs to have that have that ability for a drain to come back to return that solution and I'll get into this this pipe here more in depth later but ultimately that's how I add oxygen to the system so the reservoir also needs to hold the oxygen that you have um, that whatever method you decide to add oxygen to your system that's that's also another point of the reservoir is to hold oxygenated solution okay and I'll get into that in another video uh, this time I just want to really focus on a reservoir and what makes a good reservoir alright construction so you can you don't really have to construct anything you can use a five gallon bucket you can set that five gallon bucket on the ground and in fact that's what I did the first time um, I didn't have a I didn't have anything I didn't have a lot of time it was in the middle of growing season and I built this hydroponic system to set it up and I used a five gallon bucket and uh, I think I had 10 or 12 pipes running off of it and I had a 400, and 400 gallon per hour pump sitting in it and it, it worked fine um, if there's an issue it drained really fast but the nice part about these submersible pumps is it will never pump out more water than than the the center of the impeller so it will continue to operate and it won't burn out most of the time at least in my experience they won't burn out if they get low on water um, and you can hear it from far off you can hear sound that's the sound of it change it sounds from goes from the sound of a trickle to the sound of I don't know it sounds like like a like a dying pump I guess <laughs> um, it, you you will know you'll know when your reservoir is out of water which will happen from time to time um, depending on your setup some setups are completely enclosed where they there's no way they can leak and uh, some systems are have an open end channel like like these ones And so water, a lot of times, will come back up that. Hopefully that was in shot. I couldn't see. But 
I'm leaning more towards doing raw, more raw uncut videos just so I can get the content out there. So if that's not in the picture, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so where was that? So a, a five gallon bucket can work depending on the size of your system. Um, I've used storage bins, 30 gallon storage bins. Uh, I use it and they, they actually work really, really well. You can go three to four days between top ups depending on how big your system is. Uh, this one, that system right here, this is this is like a average DIY homeowner type system, and it's just using a storage bin. It's like a 27 or a 30 gallon. I don't remember exactly, but it's made out of food grade plastic, so it works. And again, the pump is sitting in there, and the water drains off of a gutter into that. Okay, so that would work if you have maybe, I think I have 200 plants on that. So that's that's enough for 200 plants. Ultimately, you want to have, I found for a nutrient, the nutrient film technique that this is using, I found that 10 plants for every gallon works fine for me. All right, now we're going to go back to my reservoir, and I'm going to show you um, just briefly how I constructed it. Alright, so I'm going to do my best to kind of explain it to you. But basically I made a rectangle out of 1x12 pine, pine board. As you can see, I screwed it together. And then I installed another board on top that runs around. So that way, just in case, um, just in case the pressure pushes it pushes against this wall I have something to kind of back it up and and hold it together and then I put a piece of plywood underneath it and you don't need to do this I did it so that way I could easily level it so I got the I got the the board underneath there to level it um, you don't have to do that you can just set it on the ground my ground was really bumpy and un uneven so I decided to put a giant sheet of plywood underneath it this one is three foot by five foot I think it holds about 110 120 gallons each cubic foot will hold um, is, is about is equivalent to about eight gallons so I've got about 15 gallons if it's if it's completely full or I have about 15 cubic foot if it's completely full times eight gallons you get I think it's 120 120 gallons in this reservoir which I've experienced is, is fine for me. All right, so then I have this six millimeter plastic and it's just draped over it. It's not screwed in at all. And you can pick that up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And um, it, will, it, it works fine. I'm expecting to get three to four years out of it. It's pretty safe from the sun because it's underneath here and it's on the north side of the greenhouse and uh, my pump is so powerful that when the water gets low it sucked this plastic up and so that's why I have the lid to a bin sitting in there just so that way it doesn't and the pump is, sits, sits on it so if the water gets low, it doesn't suck that plastic up. You may not need to do that. I ran it with the smaller pump in there that's coming off that line that I showed you earlier, and I didn't have any problems with it. It's only, it's only when I put this larger pump in that sucks 3,100 gallons per hour in, so it's a fairly large pump. I could use a bigger reservoir. I think during the summer, I'll probably end up pumping 50 gallons a day into it but we'll see right now it's February and I only have to top it off every three days okay so you want to use you want to use something black or paint your reservoir because of algae algae growth so that's uh, I haven't experienced any algae growth and I believe that it's because of several things because a it's on the northern side of the greenhouse B because it sits underneath these channels 
and see because I used black. I've seen people who have their reservoir in the same position, but they have it, it's, it's white and it's round and they have to clean out the algae. They actually go inside their tank and clean out the algae and, and uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'm, I'll probably have to at one point, but so far I haven't had any algae in mine. And I think it's because of those factors. If it does ultimately get algae in it, I'm going to build a foam, a styrofoam cover to put on top of it. Okay. Um, in the summertime, you want to keep your reservoir cool. Because when water gets over 75 degrees, it has a hard time holding dissolved oxygen. Ah, delicious. It has a hard time holding dissolved oxygen. So that's why it's on sitting on the north side of the greenhouse underneath these channels. Is because um, ultimately anything you can do to keep it cool is, is good. Now I want to bury the channel. Or I, damn. I want to bury the reservoir. Um, I didn't have time when I was constructing this greenhouse. I had to get this done and installed so that way I could start growing. But uh, I and I have rock hard dirt. It's made of clay. It it's actually okay to grow in, but it, it, it does hold a lot of moisture, and it's really hard to dig in. You basically have to turn it into mud before you can dig it or use an excavator. Um, but anyway, ultimately it would be nice to have it buried. Not only for for cooling purposes, but so that way the drain line can be more angled. My drain line, the way that it, the way the system is set up, actually is angled up a little bit, and it still drains fine for for now. But um, if it would be better if it was buried, and also I could I could fit. I could probably fit another board on top of that if it was buried and ultimately give me a larger reservoir. Okay, so the cost of a reservoir, I mean, I've seen them go up to seven, eight hundred, a thousand dollars for a large reservoir, down to, you know, five bucks for a five gallon bucket or the fifteen dollars for the thirty gallon bin. Um, mine. Mine is 120 gallons, and if I had to go to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy all the materials, that 1 by 12 is about a dollar a foot, and I have 5, 10, 16 feet of it, so it'd be about $16 for the 1 by 12. Um, maybe another $10 for the 2 by 4s that go around the top, and then. Uh, another ten dollars for the for the plastic so you're probably looking at 40 bucks but to buy a 125 gallon reservoir would be a lot of money um, some people use those large um, plastic white cubes and they cut them in half which would be fine those are only like 75 bucks um, and I w may have used one of them except for the fact that it's white so you'd have to paint the outside black and uh, ultimately mine, since it's five foot long, I was able to fit a larger reservoir in those than, than one of those because they're, they're only three, three foot by three foot, I think. Then the next hydroponic video that I want to do will be on the pump that sits inside of it and then this water system. What those things are and what this is and so I just want to be a little bit more in depth on the on the plumbing on the plumbing on this uh, my overall video of, of this system has gotten has been getting a lot of views it's my most popular video so I kind of want to come back and I want to go a little bit more in depth on this